So today we're going to be going over three basic things about the Haida people. Do not always put in resources down below that also affirm what I'm saying, just in case there's any debate down in the comment section. And I do recognize that they are, depending on the family, there's different stories for each kind of fact about the Haida people or a fact about just Native American people in general. There's rarely one right answer for anything. So please, if I'm not covering anything that you know, post that down below. And I'll try to make a response video talking about the information I either got wrong or didn't include and all that kind of stuff. And with this video, we're gonna kind of focus on the basic. We won't go too in depth with it. So number one, where are the Haida people from? So they're from Canada and Alaska, very basic. And then when they go in a little deeper into the map, find Haida people from Haida Gwaii. It used to be called the Queen Charlotte's Island. And it, the name Haida Gwaii, Gwaii got reclaimed back in I think 2010. And I might do a whole video talking about that. I wasn't there for that, but I read a lot of the articles and just was really happy that it happened. I think it would be an interesting video too. We originated from Haida Gwaii. There's all sorts of different stories for origin stories depending on the family and then historical people and anthropologists and all that kind of stuff. So we won't get into that this video because this is going to be basic. Alaska, we also came from Alaska. Before contact, a lot of Haidas were found on the southern part of Prince of Wales Island. I think there is upwards to 9 to 12 villages, if I remember right. I'll probably make a video going in on more of the villages on both the Canada and Alaska side, because I've always find that super interesting and I want to talk more about it. So that's where the Haidas are from. Um, just like with all cultures, you can find so many more Haidas around the world. I live in Juneau myself. I know a lot that live in Seattle, a lot that live in Ketchikan, a lot that live in probably LA, New York, and all those kind of places. Um, you'll find us everywhere, but that's kind of our original where we came from. So number two. It is my favorite one because I'm a language person. What language do the Haida people speak? And that is Hadkel. So Had means Haida and then Kil means to speak or languages. So with Haida, there are three main variations and variations could mean accent, dialect, or anything like that. In my current graduate certificate studies, the linguists that we're learning from want us to call it variation. So the three main variations are Alaskan Haida and Skidigit Haida and Masset. And within those variations are slight variations depending on family or maybe even village or or just individually if someone has a lisp or some kind of speech impediment they're gonna sound a little different just like in English. Another thing about our language is that it's a linguistic isolate and if you don't know what that is that means it's there's no other language in the world like it. We can't really trace with the languages around us, the grammatical structure, our structure is quite a bit different than our neighbors. And then our sounds are pretty different. And we do share words, like in English, we still speak some French and Spanish words, but we consider that English words. But it's kind of the same with the Pacific Northwest natives, especially with like cat, dog, pig, horse. Most of the language I know of on the Pacific Northwest call pig, guisao, or horse, you down. And it very, it sounds a little different, but pretty similar, but yeah. So that's our language and I might make a video going really in depth about our language because that's what I'm currently working on getting my graduate certificate for. The third thing is what the Haida people are well known for within the Pacific Northwest people and also historically. So from what I've heard from elders and then also have read in books and there's a big giant yellow Spanish book that is through Spanish eyes or something like that and it, it was in Spanish. <laughs> it was translated into English. The Haida people were known for their trade skills. They're very good at trading and commerce and just being really good businessmen. And then they also were, were good soldiers. So the reason why I say soldiers instead of warriors is because there's specific people within like a family group and our family groups are pretty relatively big um, if you know our clan system. And there's specific people that are trained to be the warriors, the people that fight from what I've heard it, from family and books and then elders. Warriors are, by definition, people, everyday people that have to go out and fight, but are people that fought for us kind of trained to be fighters. So they were more so soldier, soldiers than anything else, and that they were kind of cutthroat. So. And our neighbors were just as strong, just as business-oriented, and good builders of wood. We had the best wood in Haida Gwaii, the biggest trees and all that kind of stuff, so obviously we'd have better canoes and other wooden products, but this is what I've known from history, and it could be a little tainted by just being being a Haida person and most of my people I'm learning from are Haida so of course we're gonna see ourselves as the most powerful and the most whatever beautiful and all that kind of stuff so we were really well known for being tradesmen and sea, sea people. <laughs> 
so yeah, I think that's about it. I want to do more of me, me answering questions or just stating three random facts about the Haida people or just anything that's kind of informational because I like doing those videos. It forces me to do some research and to keep kind of fresh on my own studies of my own people and I don't know, it would be kind of fun to talk about modern day Haida people because they do really cool stuff in Canada and down here or up here in Alaska as well. So, however watching.